This video is about finding domain and range, specifically from a graph. Okay, so remember some vocabulary. Domain refers to all the x values occupied by the graph. Range refers to all the y values, so make sure you remember this. So when you write domain and range, you use interval notation, and here are some of the rules. Lowest, leftist, highest, rightest. So you always put your numbers in order from lowest to highest, okay? And parentheses mean that those numbers are excluded. Brackets mean that they are included. If there's an open circle, it's an excluded point. If any time you use an infinity, it's exclusive as well because infinity is not a specific number. Closed circles means it's included in the graph, so we use the brackets. Now, what am I talking about? Remember, domain is all the x's, right? And this arrow means that it goes on forever, so we say that that's negative infinity. And this arrow is going in the positive direction to the positive infinity. Okay, so that's what I would say for my x's. I can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. The y's, if I go up, my range, the up is positive, right? It goes on for infinity, so this is considered positive infinity, and this is negative infinity. All right, so let's just say I have a random line like this. Okay, what do those arrows tell me? They go in both directions forever and ever, amen, right? So what would I say? I would say my domain, all the x values occupied by the graph. Well, if I take this line and I flatten it down to the x-axis, where is it going to be covering? It's going to cover the x-axis, right? And it has no stopping point, so it's going to go on forever and ever. So this one would cover forever and ever this way, which means it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And because it's an infinity, remember this is exclusive or parentheses, okay? We put parentheses around it. So that would be the domain of this graph. For the range, that's all the y values occupied by the graph. So again, now take the same line, collapse it to the y-axis this time, and if you fold it on the y-axis, what's going to happen? It's going to follow right along. Every one of these y values is going to be filled up, and because of the arrows on each end, it's a line and it goes on forever. So my range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. So lowest left is highest rightest, okay? Lowest values to highest, lowest to highest on both domain and range when you write your answer. All right, let's try a couple more examples. All right, so look at this one. It's not a straight line going in both directions. It's just a ray has an endpoint, okay? So for domain, I'm looking for what are the x values that this occupies. So if I take it, collapse it down to the x-axis, it's going to go this way. It has an arrow, so it's going to keep on going. And remember, this points to positive infinity, but it starts right here, okay? So it includes this x value of x is 2, but that's the lowest x value it has. It doesn't exist over here at all in the graph. And then from 2, it goes on and on and on for forever. So we could say it goes to infinity. Now, because there's a closed circle there, we use a bracket for the 2. And infinity, remember, is infinity, not a specific number, so we use the parenthesis for that. For the range, I'm going to take the same line, collapse it to the y-axis, and look at what y values are occupied. Okay, so what's my lowest y value? Well, it's a 2 also, and it goes in positive infinity. Again, closed circle, so it's a bracket. It goes on to infinity, so it's a parenthesis. So there's my domain and range. Look at number two. Domain and range, again, of this line. Notice there's a hole. Now, you may not have seen a discontinuous line like this before, but we will see those as we move along in pre-cal. This is a hole, so it means that there is nothing there where x is negative 2 and where y is, where y is 4. There's a hole there, okay? All I did was connect those, okay? So first, for domain, I'm going to take my line and collapse it down to the x-axis. Keep in mind, there's a hole there, right? Otherwise, every other point is covered, and there's arrows on the end. So I have to reflect in my interval notation that every x value is covered except for where x is negative 2. So what I do, I read from left to right. Left is negative infinity, right? Goes on and on until we get to negative 2, all right? So negative infinity gets a parenthesis. This negative 2 is not a closed circle, so I exclude it by using a parenthesis. 
And then I basically need to jump over that and just on the other side of negative two, I keep going on to positive infinity. So there's my domain statement. So sometimes there's more than one set of parentheses, sometimes even three. Now for range, let's do the same thing. We're gonna collapse it to the y-axis. So my line would fall along the y-axis, but there would be that hole right there where y is four. So everything is covered y value wise, except for y is four. So again, lowest to highest, lowest left is highest right is. So lowest is negative infinity. Work your way up the y-axis and it's all good until you get to y is four. So I have to indicate that break by this. I jump over the four. Parentheses, remember, say I'm not really including four, I'm doing everything up to four. Jump over the four and then I go on until positive infinity. All right? That's what that domain range statement would look like. All right, so what happens when you have a graph like this? It's discontinuous, and um, there's gaps like this. But if you remember from Algebra 2, we talked about rational functions, the ones that look like opposite Ls. And what you were taught was that there are asymptotes there that break up the graph. There's an asymptote here, where x equals 4. I made that. And there's one right here. This is where y is 0. Okay. And um, so you have to account for that when you do your domain and range of a rational function. Because remember, you're trying to make a statement that says every x value is occupied on this graph except for what, which ones. Well, right here, if we do domain, the 4 is not occupied. There's an asymptote there. The graph does not exist there. It's an asymptote. So it's a gap in, in the graph. So 4 is my gap. But from negative infinity to positive infinity, all those x values are covered except for the 4. It could be covered by the downward L or the upward L, but it's covered. So my, my statement would be negative infinity to 4. It jumps over 4 and then it picks right back up. And it goes to positive infinity. Those x values are covered. Okay, remember collapsing it down to that axis, everything's covered except for x is 4. Now, if I collapse to the y-axis, okay, everything hugging up on the y-axis. So everything's going to come right here, except where y is 0, because that's where the asymptote lies. And again, down here, it's going to come. So it's going to skip for y is 0. So I need to show that in my range. So from negative infinity, remember, lowest leftist, highest rightist, negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to positive infinity, the graph exists. But at zero, there's an asymptote. I don't have to talk about the asymptote in this statement. I just have to represent the gap in the graph. All right, what about weird ones like this? Look at this. Okay, domain and range. Now, the only thing discontinuous about this is this hole right here. This graph goes on forever and ever. If I remember the arrow means it's going to come on forever and ever. It's going to hug that x-axis. There's just a gap right here where x is 4. And that gap is right here where y is 3, right? So where x is 4, there's a gap, but everywhere else, it's covered because the line has arrows on the end. Okay? So for my domain, I can say from negative infinity to 4. It jumps over 4 and goes to positive infinity. With range, I'm going to hug the y-axis. Okay. From here, this is the lowest the graph goes. So y is, where y is 3, there's a hole there, right? But the graph exists everywhere above that, right? So I can only show this part of my y-axis. So in my range, I need to reflect that. The graph starts at 3, but doesn't exist there, really, because there's a hole. So I put a parenthesis. All right, where does it go from there with the y-values? Well, the y-values, it goes on forever and ever and ever because of this arrow right here. So that's going to go to positive infinity. And that represents the entire range of that whole picture. Okay. Now, I want you to try this one on your own. You may be comfortable with this and feel good about it and ready to go. If you're not quite there, try the second video. It has three more examples that might help you see the difference between domain and range and how to identify it from your graph. If you have questions, feel free to bring them to class. See you in class.